let's do a deep dive in comparison between CRUD, Create, Read, Update, Delete, and CQRS, Command Query Response Segregation. We should be very familiar with CRUD because it's the basic principle in which most web-based or any type of online systems work. The idea that you have some type of user interface that communicates with some sort of backend that allows you to read data from it. I hit an endpoint, for example, in RESTful services at Git, I get data, it pulls that data out of a database. When I want to add a record, create new data, I call an endpoint, typically a post. The backend will actually handle creating the records in the database. When I want to update data, similar to create, I do a put from a RESTful perspective. The backend handles updating an existing record in a database. And finally, a delete. I do some operation on the front end. It calls the REST delete endpoint. And then the related records are deleted from the database. The big problem here is we're talking database, database, database. And whether we're talking a fully relational database or something like NoSQL, consider that, especially with the relational databases, these are not infinitely scalable. In order to have data consistency from a relational perspective, that requires a lot of coordination. That's why we have something known as data warehousing. We know that a database can't hold an infinite amount of data or near infinite amount of data, so we generally have to delete data out of the primary database and put it somewhere else for historical purposes. While you have other types of NoSQL solutions that can come and account for this, consider that you're really just replicating data in different places. Fundamentally speaking, when we're talking about the create, read, update architecture, we're really tying ourselves to a single database or series of databases as a source of truth. When looking at CQRS, it's a different path through this. Specifically, it separates how you get data versus how you change data. When looking at the same type of model, what this generally means though, when it comes to reading data, which in this case is only one path, I'm gonna hit some app endpoint, but I'm gonna have to have that endpoint pull data out of some persistence layer, just like the normal path. But when it comes for updating data, the idea is that the updating of data goes on to some asynchronous event bus, which then has to be processed in some way, either within a system or some other system picking it up off the event bus. And you're relying on something known as an aggregator or a processor, listening for those events and updating that one data persistence. And the really important part here is that there's not just one data persistence box. The idea is that you break up the application into these independent data stores, very much like in a NoSQL model, that are all constructed around events. This essentially allows you to break up how you get data versus how you read data. When it comes to reading data, you're always assuming that that data is just going to be available in the right format you need directly inside your data persistence area. But when you have to write data, this is a fully asynchronous operation which again has some design constraints you have to consider. If I'm going to update my account, for example, in a typical web-based system, when I do that update operation, I then have to wait for it to hit the event bus and then some other application to pick it up and process it and update whatever the underlying data store is that's tied for getting the data. The options here, you can put up a spinner and just wait for this event or evidence of this event to be processed, or you can treat it as fully asynchronous we got your update, we'll let you know when it's updated, or there's also a little bit of a, uh, a trick you can sometimes do if you generally can rely on these things being fast, where you essentially save the information client side, showing that the user has updated their information, and then you're trusting that the event is gonna make its way through the system and update it. This means though you have a more complicated error handling scenario. Let's say for some reason that update didn't work. You now have to have some sort of mechanism in place to recognize that, hey, this update didn't work and the user's either going to have to redo this or someone's going to have to look into it.